now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 636 on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here to our little program. By the way, it should just be pointed out as I was having a coughing attack and I mentioned you reciting a recipe, it's because you're you're like a top-notch chef. Yeah, well, I'm a good home cook. That's when, what I when am. We're not, when we're not talking politics, Julie and I are almost always inevitably always. talking I sho- I'm, cooking. Yeah, I showed a picture to everyone in the studio of the cake I made. Of your I birthday made. cake that you made, so it was in my mind. Yes, yes, I know. I am never offended, Larry. I just want to make sure everyone regular. I know you aren't. I know. But other people get offended on your behalf. <laughs> and, you know, we got to care about them. Yeah. I know I do. Coming up later this morning at 705, Joe DeGeneva will be here. 735, Ginny Gentles, IWF on Title IX rewrite that now really puts women at risk. And at 805, Mark Poletta on the continuous attacks on Clarence Thomas. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock, who's a fine chef. Cook. Home cook. Thank Jason you. Jason <laughs> Isaac is a former Texas congressman, now founder of American Energy Institute, because it's Earth Day, so we should all be walking wherever we want to go, right, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's also Lennon's birthday too. So happy! Oh, Friday. perfect. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> so there's no coincidence there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, where do we start? I mean, the the president, of course, uh, depleted our petro- strategic petroleum reserves after Donald Trump had topped it off when gas prices were at their lowest. He did it for political purposes. Now he can't replace it at a time where, with you know, war breaking out in the Middle East, we could actually probably use that strategic petroleum reserve. Meanwhile, uh, the Biden administration wants everybody to use electricity, and the cost of electricity has gone up, what, 11 percent in just the last year? This is not a good time to actually want to use energy to fuel anything right now in this country. No, you're right. And cost of it, I think over the last three years have gone up nearly 30 percent for electricity. And it's this climate agenda that is driving the cost up. It's utilities passing along costs because of these ambitious, really dumb goals, in my opinion, because they don't do anything to mitigate a changing climate. They just increase the cost of everything. And so they're embracing this so-called, this political agenda of energy transition and ESG and decarbonization, things that the Chinese laugh about us. And I have friends that ask, well, why aren't the Chinese embracing the climate agenda? I'm like, well, they already have a communist government. They have to control every aspect of the people's lives there. Uh, and so, yes, costs are increasing significantly, and I think that's going to show up at the ballots this November, the, you know, the polling locations, because you've got an increase from 2021 to 2022 of 30 percent having their electricity disconnected here in the United States, a 76 percent increase in people having their natural gas at home disconnected. That's over 5 million Americans adding to people that don't have access to energy in this country of all places. It shouldn't be the case, but it's a climate agenda that's driving these policies that's resulting in these increased costs. We've seen some walking back of the ESG and DEI sort of agendas, um, largely that has been due to some of the conversations on race and campus culture. Um, Do you see them walking back the climate component of ESG, like some of these major investing companies like BlackRock, or are they really just focusing on the sort of uh, racial aspect? No, I do see them walking back and companies like BlackRock and Vanguard have already pulled their United States divisions of their businesses out of a group called the Climate Action 100 Plus. And they just switched in BlackRock's case, they switched it over to BlackRock International. Mm -hmm. I I wrote the first draft of the bill that passed in Texas and became law that says if you boycott, divest or sanction fossil fuels, then you no longer can do business with the state of Texas. And just a couple of weeks ago, that resulted in the largest divestiture to date of a BlackRock fund in Texas pulled $8.5 billion out from underneath nice. their management because they're weaponizing our capital pension dollars mm-hmm. and tax dollars that are used to improve public education. They're using those dollars and weaponizing them against responsible American energy producers. And while they're just dumping billions into Chinese companies, they could care less about the environment. They could care less about human rights. That's why I refer to it as the China ESG agenda, because it just separates you and I from our food, our fuel, and our money. We're speaking with Jason Isaac, former Texas congressman. He's CEO of American Energy Institute on this Earth Day, where we're sure that 
the president and his allies in Congress will put out some kind of ridiculous Earth First initiative uh, that will basically be, well, communism, as you just compared all of these agendas to. I gotta ask you, I mean, it, the, robust domestic drilling and refining of natural gas and oil is not only brilliant in a microeconomic uh, perspective, but also a macroeconomic perspective. And it's also great for national security to not be reliant on countries like, oh, I don't know, Venezuela, Russia, and Iran, not to mention Canada, for our oil. Uh, is there stomach within the Republican Party on Capitol Hill to be able to embrace that robust agenda? Because, the, oh, you're killing our planet. You're anti-science. You don't believe in climate change. No, they should be proudly against this climate change agenda. Do they get it, or are they terrified to say so? Well, I think the left has done an incredible job, and there's research published at AmericanEnergyInstitute.com that just shows of the vast dis this display of the network that is funding this narrative, and that some, unfortunately, some Republicans have bought into that are starting to embrace the agenda of decarbonization. D CO2, the, the carbon dioxide, you know, this, this gas that really gives us life, it's a trace gas in our atmosphere. It's 0.04% of our atmosphere. And as we contribute just a little bit more to the atmosphere, we're seeing a greening planet. But I would hope that conservatives and Democrats alike, you know, everybody should embrace the high carbon lifestyle like I do. It's truly where you have economic price, prosperity and environmental leadership. I <laughs> yes, love I this high carbon, high carbon lifestyle. lifestyle. Ex Congressman Isaac, can you stay with us? It's because we're going to see this all over the place. It's propaganda. And I would love to sort of dive into this a little further because Republicans are partly responsible for this, for not standing up yes, for the truth. Are. Can you stay with us for one more segment to talk about it since it yes. is Earth Day? And I like I like yes. I, yeah. All right. Congressman Isaac's going to stay with us because Earth is a good planet. Say what you will about it. It's the best one. I want to talk about his new luxury brand, High Carbon Lifestyle. I, I am ready. I'm going to get the website right now. All right. We'll get into that in just a moment right now. Millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue mm. is... Mm. Your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? Up talking, by the way, should be banned from public speaking if you're a member of the House of Representatives. That's AOC, of course. That was five years ago, so we only have seven years left, I guess, on her timeline. We continue with Congressman Jason Isaac of Texas. We laugh about it, but that stuff, you know, the mainstream media and people in academia, they, they you know, they clutch their breasts. And well, a think, generation of children has been terrified by that's this. That's right, with, with uh, Ted Turner's Captain Planet and all of these things. And they truly do believe that our generation is destroying their future. And let's not forget, and this is why I want to keep you here, Congressman Isaac, it was George W. Bush's EPA that recategorized carbon dioxide as a pollutant. As a pollutant, you just said it's 0.04% of our atmosphere, and we breathe it. We actually create this, and they called it a pollutant. Can we fix this? I just want it fixed because we have bought into this idea that in some way carbon dioxide is ruining the planet, number one, and number two— that it's man-made carbon dioxide and that we can actually do something about it. And there is no evidence to suggest either is true. You're right. And the, the pollutant thing will play out throughout the courts and hopefully Congress will act and set this right because <laughs> the Clean Air Act was set to regulate actual pollution, the things that in certain quantities cause humans harm. And we've done a wonderful job of reducing that pollution. The six criteria pollutants, nearly 80 percent over the last five decades. We're world leaders in clean air. We're number one when it comes to access to clean and safe drinking water. But <clears throat> just because the president says something, in the, like in the specific example of Title IX that you're probably going to talk about here later this morning, the president can say whatever they want. They can't change law. We need Congress to do that. And <clears throat> this, this calling CO2 a pollutant is laughable because that means that every single one of us, like you said, and animals are pollution-creating beings. Yeah, by breathing, uh, by the mere <laughs> act of breathing. <laughs> Yeah, there's a Norwegian study that came out just a couple of months ago that said that man's contributions of CO2 in the atmosphere have had no impact on temperature over the last 200 years. That's yeah. pre-industrial revolution. 
I, I said the media is going to refer to them as MAGA Norwegians because of their <laughs> positions on science. <laughs> well, and I got to say, Senator you know, John Kennedy, Senator Kennedy of Louisiana is mm. brilliant on this. When he gets one of these people in front of him, he says, my, my favorite question that he asked them is, if we do everything you're asking us to do, which will cost $50 trillion, yeah, well, can you tell us what difference it will make in the Earth's temp temperature? And they can't answer that question. <laughs> yeah. Even if we do everything uh, they're telling us to do, they can't tell us that it'll make any discernible difference. Well, and I've used the models that the United Nations Intergovernmental Planet on Climate, climate Change uses, and I've run those models saying, well, what if we do this? Because I wanted to know the question that the UN was basing all of this on. And if the U.S. decarbonizes and meets net zero by 2050, the temperature differential by 2100 using their models is less than one-tenth of one degree. And it's mm. two tenths globally if everybody meets net zero. So we waste fifty trillion dollars for alleged two tenths of one degree. It's it's just absolutely absurd. It's increasing the cost as we're seeing people getting separated from their energy right now and getting their utilities disconnected. So, There's four billion people on the planet that don't have access to energy that you and I do and we take for granted on a daily basis. We need to be producing. I tell people all over the country, we stand over the key to ending poverty here in the United States and we produce that key more responsibly than anywhere on the planet and that's oil, gas and coal and nuclear energy. You talk about embracing the high carbon lifestyle, and I'd, I'd I'd love to explore that a little further because you know you get your Pete <laughs> Buttigiegs of the world, you get your Bernie, and 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 sadly you get all ninety to a hundred percent of the media in pop culture as well as the news news media who will take this smug attitude of well everybody knows it's already a given we shouldn't even entertain anyone who denies the fact that carbon is destroying our planet. But but it isn't conventional. It isn't everybody knows. It isn't scientific fact. But they've created this mythology around it yeah. that if you dare to say what I'm saying right now, you're a laughing stock. No, oh, and they do, and they try to dismiss you, but they won't debate the, debate the science, the facts, and the math. And it's these self-righteous coastal elites that think they know what's best for you, and they're pushing their agenda on you. I, I guess to move the conversation along, other than both of us lamenting about that's the reality, what can we do to change <laughs> that? Because they, they have a bunch of academic research behind them that they can point to that nobody ever wants to read. Has Have the conservatives, have the right, have the, uh, have the industry, have, have anyone rooted in reality, have they funded contrary research? Do we have those papers that we can point to? We absolutely do, but the media suppresses them. I mean, That's you right. can look at there's great groups like the CO2 Coalition, over 150 scientists that are educating people about the facts, the math, and the science, which is incredible. A, a Nobel Prize winner amongst them. This this is incredible. So yes, it's just the media suppressing it because you don't want they don't want people to know about it. They like to, they like fear to control us. All right. Well, we 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 don't like to live in fear. We we embrace these challenges. So we'll try to embrace bring the high carbon lifestyle. Yes, and the high carbon lifestyle. <laughs> You need to copyright that. <laughs> Former Congressman Jason Isaac. He's got a great social media feed, by the way, over at X. It's Isaac for Energy. Uh, go follow him, get more information, and we're going to do our best to beat the drum here as well. Thank you, Congressman. Great to be on. Thanks for having me. It's 654.